Hey. Yep. Hopefully we are live now. I don't know. We heard that massive sigh. It's because my computer is broken. Well, it's on its way out. Right, so at this point in time, I haven't got much to do but sit here and either be up. Some games, man. So sh yeah, we're gonna play some games. Um, quickly before we start, right? I would like to know if you guys have any like challenges you want me to do on games that I play. I know I say games like very broadly, like as if you guys know the exact amount of games I've got. But <laughs> for instance, in this game, Grand Theft Auto game, if there's any challenges you want to see me do in the game, please let me know, right? Other than that, as usual, it's gonna take about 10 minutes to start this game. Well, to get everything set up, start the game properly, give enough time for people to get in, and um, yeah, a few things I have to let you know off the bat. One, it is a Peggy 18 rated game, so there is a lot of violence, um, bad language, and certain themes that might trigger people, right? So, if that's not what you're into, or if you didn't come here to see anything like that, I just want you to know, this stream probably isn't for you, but it doesn't mean this channel isn't for you, because we've got lots of family friendly content on this channel especially on the transformative stories right that's produced by hunt which is another youtube channel called hunt viral it's all one word you can go find them over there they do a great job of editing but yeah we do have a lot of family friendly content and like just stuff that is literally meant to help right but this isn't one of those streams this is just me enjoying classic retro games and just giving commentary as I go through playing it, right? So, yeah, that that fair warning is there for you, so you know. Grand Theft Auto is a violent game, and it does have a lot of language that you may not like, right? Second thing I need to tell you is, if you do participate in this stream, be it talking, if I somehow figure out how to get you on the mic, or if you leave a comment while I'm live, I always come back, find your channel, give you a subscribe, a like, and kind, because that's just what people do, right? But I also need to remind you to just be careful what you say because it may offend people and it also may get you blocked right so don't violate the guidelines and try to be kind and considerate of other people's feelings right and cultures you know so with that said it's going to take me about 10 minutes to get the game up and running do feel free to check out our most recent video it is well it used to be called <laughs> the X-Files is real conspiracy kool-aid but the most recent upload based on some analytic stuff that I don't really understand it's now called the Y files is really real right it's the latest video and it's usually the biggest one on the on the home page of our channel so if you click on view channel that biggest video there at the top will be our most latest video and it's going to be the X-Files one. It's really about conspiracy theories, it's a comedic video but it's hopefully informative too. So in a minute I will take time to put that in the chat for you guys. And if you're watching on a playback please feel free to go check it out as well because that, that, the content we do in the hunt documentaries is the core content for both channels right. Although we have gaming, we have music, we have talks, all of the stuff. Those are the focus production for for actual consumption. Right, so there's actually a lot of effort, a lot of thought have gone into making those things, right? So hopefully you do come across them, even though you're here for a stream of one of your favourite games probably, hopefully. We do also do other things on this channel, so you know, right? So I'm going to stop babbling and I'm going to set up the stream and then I'll be right on in a minute. And oh yeah, we got a store connected to our channel now. So you can check out the caps that I actually wear in real life. No, a lot of people see me wearing these hats in real life. And they're like, what is that, right? Now you can find one for yourself on the channel, right? I'm not going to tell you too much about it, but it's there to find if you want to find it. We got hats, we got shirts and we got hoodies. You know why? Because that's what I wear. I don't like to do any other weird stuff. I like tracksuits, shirts, and caps, right? And maybe a woolly every now and again. I might make a woolly, but who knows, right? We'll see. But yeah, it's available in the store now, and I'll shut up and get the stream set up.
trouble. You're making me late. So this is what the waiting thing is? Consultant on special needs cop. Bell, little homie. Hey, man. You're a waste of street space. All we make to the walk. Stopping.
I'm taking this now. Better to give than to receive, huh? Where you going? Style, man. I'm almost ready to go, so what I'll do is I'll jump out and start that mission. Oh look, the NPCs are just about to get mad. Oh look, they're jacking the boy. Damn, son. Oh man, that he's unarmed, you mother... <laughs> That's cool. Them trials don't up, play. Bitch. Damn, son. They done him dirty, bro. <laughs> We're hearted. The NPCs in this game are absolutely mental. Run, Farley. Hey, hey, the way this guy communicates is gangster as well. One man that's blind and one man that don't speak. 
What do you mean there's a death man and they're good? This may explain the cowardly attack on Blood Feather Trident. There may be some trouble ahead. There may be trouble ahead. A courier has left it in a truck at the airport. It is most important to the matter at hand. Oh, I can do that. <laughs> he is trying. A mountain boy? Yes. No, a personal friend of mine. He's more tried than you. He's likely to draw the attention of the Danan rules. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for your support. <laughs> Feels like a... Timu. Yo, whoever be making... <laughs> that Timu songs be hard. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't telling me nothing now. I just, I ain't gonna go to their shop, but. Yo, I was. You know what? Oh no, I just realized I can't die. If I die, I lose all my all my guns and all that. And it's just it's too much of a hassle. So we're avoiding death and arrest in this run, if you didn't know, because it's too much of a hassle to go and get everything back again. So yeah, now you know, you know, right? Annoying. Right, man, I'm finna munching some crisps, so I doubt you want to hear that. If you chime in, if you say anything, I'll definitely respond, but I might be a little bit uh, slow to respond because I'll be watching YouTube on my phone, so I won't be able to see your messages on the live unless they pop up in a little box at the top of the screen, right? So unless that happens, I won't see him straight away, so you're probably not even hearing this anyway. By the time you come in and start talking, you wouldn't have heard this anyway, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Alright, be back in a minute. It is most important to the matter at hand. Oh, I can do that. <laughs> he is Triad, a mountain boy? No, a personal friend of mine. And less likely to draw the attention of the Danang boys. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thanks for your support. I just noticed that they replenished my health on that restart. That doesn't usually happen. But then again, that health was down since the last two missions, I think. Maybe man, maybe one or two. So if you missed it, we was um doing some woozy missions the other day. And also we located this bar that isn't on the map, so it's not highlighted on the map. I think it's around hmm. It's near the Kung Fu place. It's somewhere around here, right? It's not on the map. So when we went in there, like, the games kind of glitched. So they didn't work properly. So I'm assuming that's probably why Grand Theft Auto, the, this remake anyway, kind of left it left it off. I'm, I don't know. But I do remember going in... There it is there. I do remember going in this place on PlayStation 2, right? But the problem is... It doesn't work on the new ones for some reason. I don't know. Let, look, see if it will let us play. Can't mid mission. Yeah, we can't do it mid mission. But this place should be on the map. So should the gym. Anyway. Never gonna get it. Never gonna get it. Yach. Also, I just remembered, at some point we're going to have to spend significant time underwater to do the next woozy mission. Well, it's one of these missions where we have to swim. 
but you can't start the mission until your level's high enough. So we're going to have to mill about in the water for God knows how long till his level gets up. Which is going to be annoying. That's what I mean about playing without cheats, it can be a bit jarring. No, this mission wasn't the best either. Feds. Now we've got to use this piece of shit car. That was a pretty nice manoeuvre, isn't it? Uh, usually I would have stood there and had a firefight with them, but because we ain't got no cheats, may as well just drive away. Oh, sure life, mate. Come in bikes. Ah, uh, I smarted them slightly. <laughs> They're gonna be on me so quick. <laughs> Stop that car! <laughs> Bruv, what is wrong with people in this game? They clearly just jump in front of the vehicle, it's so annoying. I'm gonna see if I can brake, brake check them. Ah, they, they, they didn't get close enough that time. Yo, what is wrong with the taxi, bro? Aha, uh -huh, I got gun too. <laughs> no, I'm gonna try trap him, make him drive in something. That should have got him. Ah, oh, snap! Didn't take him off the bike though. Damn police man. Can't see we under enough pressure already. Alright, we made it. Oh. Hello, you're still popping at me. Oh my god. <laughs> What's where sort the of police killed this guy? Alright. Grab a uh, bite to eat and then get on to the next mission. I'm supposed to go to the gym inside the game and learn some kung fu moves, but I don't know if I can be bothered. Maybe we'll we'll wrap up all the side quest stuff closer to the end. What would Sir The hell? I'm expecting an apology. I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> I didn't even press the shoot button. <laughs> Catalina, is that you again? P69, that's where we get get the rider mission. We finally kill Ryder there. And uh, the dude that works for Torino. Alright. 
actually while we're here let's go spend some time in the water oh that didn't work uh, this is about to be really boring guys so um, be patient I'm sure they had like jellyfish or something in this game to collect but the way he is now he ain't gonna make it down to the bottom of there maybe we, we can just see it <sighs> right I'm gonna mic off for a minute this is some YouTube
Well, I'm going to let you guys listen to what I'm listening to on YouTube, just so you're not entirely bored. It's probably going to get a copyright strike, but hey, who cares? Here's because I need financial security. You need to have some adventure in your life. You need to have some open-endedness. But hey, you also don't. have to have a sense of direction. That might seem complicated to you, and if it does, I, I point you towards mastery, the first section, particularly chapter one, and I point you towards... Law number 13 in the laws of human nature about discovering having a sense of purpose. And I give you ideas about how you can create a little bit of that dance and know That's this Robert is where I want to head in life. But I'm open to change. I'm open to things happening. And in my work, feeling a little bit uncertain about what I'm going to write tomorrow. Oh, when them ads start playing, that's when it gets really problematic. these massive transformations of character every three to five years if you catch wallace in 1987 he's just published a novel at the age of 22 and he's writing with this fever pace he's going to be the greatest author of all time but if you transport yourself five years in the future past that he is at rehab facilities he's in halfway houses he's not writing at all and working as a security guard then if you go 10 years after that he has an immense amount of writer's block and isn't writing at all and so in this video i'm going to catalog wallace's writing routine during the different phases of his life and mostly his routine routine excuse me as he was writing certain books and so now i would like to read some quotes from Wallace, kind of talking about his writing routine, and it will give us a 25,000 foot overview of his general approach to writing. And then we'll go, on, we'll go on the biographical journey of his routines. And if you guys don't already know, Write Conscious is the headquarters of everything related to David Foster Wallace. Let me check the stats on what we got here. Over 50 videos on I'm sure it should tell me how far I've And if you guys want to write swim? like Wallace, if you want to know the three books that Wallace wrote with, while drafting his essays and his Maybe we're gonna have to um, increase the stamina first, then uh, that includes Wallace's favorite then books. the swimming. There's already over a hundred, and I'm adding more books all the time. And that also includes David Foster Wallace's favorite books on writing, and the three books he always had with him while he was writing. And without any further plugs, let us hear from Wallace. Crime rating, no little G. <laughs> One thing, the process is very different <laughs> on for. whether something is fiction or non-fiction. And on whether nah, let's take this boat for a ride. Nah, nah, it's me. I think we're done enough here. Do it's quite boring, isn't it? Before something is finished. When there is a deadline, which there often is for a non-fiction piece commissioned by a magazine, the whole process has to be speeded up, which usually means 
I do nothing else in my life for a month. He says speed it up. It's sped up. He's a writer. He should know way better than saying speed it up. Should know way better than saying speed it up. Walk around, smoke too many cigarettes, fill notebooks with observations, and worry about how I can possibly write anything coherent about event that is so detailed and complex. Then again, the way Americans use words and grammar is totally different. The notes into an article. And a Although it's all English, it's not, you know what I mean? Probably this. Sometimes I enjoy writing very much. At other times, it seems impossibly difficult. Not that my grammar is ever particularly to good. To avoid doing it. I'm not very disciplined or a current U.S. Vogue word structured about work. I'm truly interested in something I'm working on. It seems truly alive to me, and I'm able to forget my own fears. And I spend far more time writing than I spend nah. anything else. Nah, I just started thinking we could take the book. If I'm not very interested, or if I'm in a period when I'm too frightened and self-conscious to be able to enjoy to, trying to write, I just thought of a way to make this happen a bit quicker. Let's stay next to the wall and then come up and jump out. And so there's a lot to unpack there, but just to kind of give you guys a general structure of how Wallace wrote, he wrote the first three drafts long-handed. And what do I mean by a draft? Because 99.9% yeah, of long capacity upgraded. really aren't doing drafts not there yet, compared though. to what a lot of real authors consider another draft. I've spent time oh, the in the Foster Wallace archive and seen the some air didn't go out quick enough. A way, excuse me, a much larger amount of time at the Cormac McCarthy archive, and luckily they're both located within 20 minutes of each other. But when I look at their drafts, and the evolution from draft to draft. It's not just that they read through everything and fix some mistakes and rework some scenes or some sentences that they Why don't Why has he got the phone they out? They think about every single word, every single sentence, sometimes for weeks at a time. There would be massive phone must be glitched in there. McCarthy would be dating a lot of his drafts and what he was working on. Where he might be oh, working look, on one chapter, the, 3,000 words the best in a draft back. for a month or two at a time. And this was just in one of seven or eight drafts that he was doing, but the same thing would happen with Wallace. And yeah, the phone's Wallace glitched out, like it's stuck in his hand. The size of Infinite Jest or a lot of his other books, there was an immense amount of complexity and things going on with his syntax, punctuation, the style, uh, connecting it to other arcs and contrasts and storylines in the narrative. So their drafting process and their revision process was very new. If you're just tuning in, you're wondering what the hell is going on here. We're doing this to improve the lung capacity because there's a woozy mission coming up where we have to swim. I just want to be slightly ahead of the curve for when that comes. I want you guys to hear that again. Revising a draft is not some 90-day process that you work on for an hour to a day for the pros. It is a full-time job to just get one of many drafts done over the course of a year. So oh, that's facts. Writing is so hand. hard, so, so long. Infinite Jest being written by hand and then rewriting it and doing these year-long revisions two more times. Because Wallace worked on That's Infinite probably Jest what drove him cra decades. crazy. Then he well, would start typing the drafts and then working on them on a computer from there. What a um, handwritten drafts of Infinite Jest, they were not three years. They were more five years, if not more, of him working on handwritten drafts. And this obviously isn't a video about revision and drafting, but when you hear authors say that they are revising, it's not what you did in high school or in college when you revised your essay. It's almost rewriting it all and rethinking it over the course of one year. If we times 50 times 40, it's about 2,000 hours of work just to revise one draft that these guys were working on, if not more for Infinite Jest. And so now that we have that, Wallace's first writing went back to obviously high school, but in university when he went to Amherst, it was very strenuous. It was probably much more hardcore than the universities we were going to, too, because first of all, it was in a different time where there were much higher expectations and it was a really good school. Focus you assume that, but you don't know that. Was studying philosophy. You know, that's no, I don't even know if you guys can hear what English the video is saying. Classes that they are much harder than English classes. I took this Kant class with this guy, and you should never say Kant, but it was the most Kant. excruciating, Kant. hard process is that, that I've ever gone to get an A-. <laughs> no, and that's Kant. Because I understood the material, but Kant, the Kant with a K. <laughs> and that, were, that was required to do well in the class was insane. The dude has like a 1.5 rating on rate my professors, but he should have a 5 out of 5 in terms of if you Le did that Kant. class, you will understand no. Kant's critique Kant. of pure reason for the rest of your life. <laughs> so when we look back, that's what he was working this on. Is, this is just philosophy but nonsense, I'm saying. Move forward to the broom of the system, something changed, because Wallace's first book, The Broom of the System, was written during his senior year, late, late junior, senior year of his undergraduate work. So I want you guys to think back to when you were 21 years old. How focused, how motivated were you? But Wallace was a very competitive individual. Oh, super made motivated. Friend, I published super focused. a dual thesis for uh, undergrad. And this is how you can tell it's intense. <laughs> Most universities, do, even like the top universities in the country right now, 
did not require you to write an undergraduate thesis to graduate. And Wallace, because he was kind of the king of the school at that time, and everybody knew him as this high-level thinker in the future of philosophy, he decided to not do a philosophical thesis, but a fictional I thesis. I to show my intellectual prowess. So he puts his mouth on himself. And from all intents and purposes, from what I've read about his life during that time, for that year, he basically hunkered down, drank a lot of coffee, smoked a ton of ganj, was boozing it up a little bit, was obviously on SSRIs, and grinded out this book. What the hell was SSRI? And speaking of David Goggins, here I am, 12 hours later, after a hard day of work and cooking and cleaning for my family, to continue the literature revolution. Because we cannot stop if we are tired. We can only stop when we are done, and the world is reading and appreciating books again. And so, Wallace and Amherst, senior oh, year, right the chill, system, he maybe had the space to be able to dedicate himself fully to his work because a lot of his friends had already graduated. Wallace took multiple semesters off. Forget that, just give me more lung capacity, so, he was man. a fifth-year university senior, and today that's no big deal. I know a lot of people who take even longer than now, that, excuse me, take even longer than that now to graduate. But when you're at one of these undergraduate high-level universities, everyone's pushing themselves through in four years because they're moving on to bigger and better things. And so Wallace had the space to be able to do drugs, to not really have to be social, and wrote the broom of the system like he had a gun to his head. And this is one approach, because a lot of you guys out there want to be a great author. Artist, you want your name to be known. You want to improve, maybe. And the fastest way for that to happen is to make sacrifices across the board. Whether it is your health, your job, your relationship, your sanity, any of those things. And I'm not recommending yeah, this, but a that's a way to skyrocket the time that you, have, the that you have to be able to write. And if it's being fueled by substances, and you're not letting them kind of lead you astray, you know, you're not drinking caffeine, smoking nicotine, smoking weed, and watching The Wire, but rather grinding out writing, then especially at a young age where there's a lot of useful energy and that can kind of carry you through and you're not getting lethargic because of all these drugs and these responsibilities and trauma from your life. That's what was happening with Wallace at the start of his career. And that's how he made these massive improvements. He willed his way into it. And this wasn't good for his physical or psychological health. And these nope. later came to bite him in the ass because, in my humble opinion, Wallace at this time for years had been hooked on the SSRIs that would eventually lead to a suicide because when he got off of them, he fell into a deep depression and couldn't get back on them again because they what didn't have What the hell was SSRI? He had been on them for over three decades at that point. And so if we transport ourselves back to when he's 22 and only been on these antidepressants for a few years. Oh, okay. This is a renewed smartphone sold on Facebook. Hey, man. Come people in ads there, bro. Hey, so this dude, right? So there's this rapper dude that put out a song like maybe three years ago and he sampled um, Metal Gear Solid. Is there a way to put a marker here? Mm, I just have to remember it as a vest there. So yeah, he sampled this bit from Metal Gear Solid, right? Which is totally fine, which is a cool creative thing to do, right? But what he done recently, well, I was speaking to another creator as well on YouTube about it. He went onto his YouTube and he used uh, the copyright tool to claim from everybody's videos. So everybody that's got a bit of that clip from Metal Gear Solid in their videos, he was able to claim that. So it's like, yo. But I put a dispute in basically when it when it happened, and I put the video private because this um this video is called Metal Gear Solid. Um, how Kojima saved a generation right this was a membership only video but just because he put that copyright strike on it I just put it um, as private because I didn't want to didn't want any trouble from YouTube right but anyway I was speaking to a dude about it yesterday because he made a video and I'm starting to think that video that he made and we was talking about when we was talking about it on the video like me and the dude we was talking about this rapper and what he had done right so I'm thinking that video that that guy made has put pressure on this rapper to make a change, right? To actually do the right thing. Because he doesn't own the Metal Gear Solid sample. Nobody owns it. Ko um, Kojima and um, Konami own it, right? So just now, uh, Google sent me an email saying that this dude has released the copyright. Because, of course, not only me, but probably thousands of creators have been going at this guy's neck because he done what he done, which is super unfortunate. But at least he's done the right thing now. So hey, I'll put that video back on public. Well, back in membership. Because to be fair, that video was my first ever video essay, so it's not the best, but it is pretty good. But anyway, just give you updated about real world scenario. <laughs> Scenario, you could say, but yeah, I've just seen that now in my own thing. Decent, glad that he done the right thing, though, man, because that was a real asshole move. We were followed here. The Danang boys are watching this apartment. As soon as we leave, they will attempt an assassination. Hey, what's the big deal? Won't you fools all right here? 
Lead them to a place quiet and cap they flat asses. No offense. None taken. <laughs> we find it funny. Look, as long as they think Mr. Farty here is in the back, they'll follow me wherever. After a while, wherever. Come <laughs> Simple. <laughs> Amazing. Your success will be rewarded, Mr. Johnson. Wait, what's this? Reminds you of the old guys. That's what it is. Just imagine, like, like a really fat Cthulhu busting in through your wall and saying, "Oh yeah." <laughs> ah, the Kool Aid does. Light up and burn out of their sockets. That's what it is. That's what I'm offering. Five oh minutes. yeah. <laughs> Winter, Sorry, I was watching YouTube shorts while that was happening. There are women running around in tank tops and short shorts, and Wallace really feels re rejuvenated. And even though he doesn't feel supported, well, of course, women in short shorts and tank tops is a good time. Something starts to happen. He would feel rejuvenated. And that's that the revision of the broom of the system was going very slowly. So Wallace was on kind of this frantic pace of writing short stories because that's what was expected of him. He never had really engaged in the practice of writing short stories. He kind of skipped that step, wrote a novel first, and then kind of went back to that because that's what it was expected of him at the University of Arizona. And so during this time, he basically wrote even short stories are difficult, his man. Second published work, um, The Girl with the Curious Hair. And the main hardship for Wallace at this time was that he was having trouble editing the broom of the system. He was in a kind of defiant war because he was a little bit too pompous and wanted the broom of the system to be something it was not willing to really budge with his editors. And so it took years of revisions and like a lot of tiresome work to get that book out. And Wallace yeah, because it takes ages just to read a book, let alone keep editing it. What he was working on, that the room of the system was very immature and like really not his best work. And he kind of wanted to be done with it. He didn't really want that to be his identity. And so the two big highlights of this time with, for Wallace are that when you're on a deadline, as we kind of talked about earlier, that's one of the things that he mentioned. That when you're on a deadline, you have to write fast. And when you're in these MFA programs and in doing workshops, you have to get something good out. And you want it to be good, and especially if there's this pressure. Because apparently Wallace was kind of pompous in class and kind of was combative with the professor. So if you're that Yeah, but you know what I think, right? I think people say that about people in hindsight, like while they're there. It's like, no. The dude wasn't pompous, he wasn't an asshole. You just thought he was better than you, so you like you projected that onto him. Like I've seen that happen in a, a lot of times. And it and it also usually turns out like the dude that they're saying is pompous and an asshole is really good guy and it's like, what the hell? You guys told me this guy was an asshole and it turns out the person that told you was an asshole is the asshole that was just jealous of the dude in the first place. Uh, that happens way too much in like just just saying different walks of life right especially if we're talking about things that require talent or or at least some layer layer of skill if you have more talent than the person next to you or people around you they're gonna just think you're an arsehole straight away and it's like oh he don't deserve that but bro we don't believe in being blessed and we don't believe in being gifted everything you get you work for it even if you work a little bit or a lot you gotta work for it right so that's a side note. That's a little tangent on that. I only say that because this dude keeps saying that about David Foster Wallace. Now I don't actually know what he was like, but I get that idea for it from him. Like, oh, apparently he was pompous in in college. Well, what do you mean he was pompous? He he's putting out a novel that just earned him forty grand, and the rest of the students in his class don't know what the hell they're doing. He's making more than his professor. Do you know what I mean? It's like. Is he pompous or is he just talented? Do you know? Anyway. So walk the walk and back it up with some good stuff. And that's what he was doing. So he was putting a, an immense amount of effort into these stories. But he was also being sidetracked. He had. Oh, you know, oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah. Undergraduate students and things of this nature and enjoying his kind of new, more free, and free life in the West. But what was really good for Wallace is that one of the years, he stayed in an apartment that his professor owned. So one of his female professors that allegedly he was sleeping with his uh, inner and not her baby. See, this guy, was, this guy was killing it, brother. He was bagging his professors. <laughs> this guy's killing it. And it had no really good air conditioning. And, it, you know, Arizona hot summers get very hot. And Wallace didn't really know what to do about it. So he just didn't go outside. So he basically, basically locked himself in this room. And wrote for a couple months. 
And this is where a lot of the ideas for Infinite Jest started to brew up. A lot of these kind of early fragments of the novel started in 86 when he was in this apartment without very good air conditioning. So while grinding this out, Wallace hit a new level, but he also hit a new level of the because he felt more isolated than ever. He really felt this dream of the University of Arizona and the women and all these things kind of fade away. And this is what happens with addicts. He was still engaging in alcohol and uh, you know other drugs and marijuana and all these things. He's only a couple years away from you know ending up in a halfway house. So we're starting to see the remnants of the screws on the bike starting to come a little bit loose and we're about to have this full-on crash. And at the end of his career in Tucson, Wallace actually um, had a mental breakdown. He moved to the west side of the city, tried to get off of his antidepressant, um, and for all intents and purposes broke down. His mom had to come and rescue him, drive him back to the house. He allegedly tried to commit suicide or took so many sedatives that they, his parents found him the next morning, passed out, and they had to go plump his stomach. Uh, at the age of 26, with a girl with a curious hair kind of on the rise and to be published, with an MFA in his pocket, he was living back at home again after his, you know, fourth mental breakdown. So Wallace's writing routine necessarily uh, hadn't changed up until this point. And so, Wallace makes another kind of tragic... The Illuminati tried to kill him, bro. <laughs> ...at the University of Harvard. He gets into a program that only allows a couple of people in a year, which is the graduate philosophy program, at least back then. And only lasts two months before he has, um... I think he tries to commit suicide, um, or says and tells univer the university or other people he's going to commit suicide, and he eventually gets hospitalized. And then we kind of hit this dead zone for a couple of Yes, we need to take him safety. Thank you. Cool. I'll see you later, man. It's decoy! Back to Chinatown! Yes, we need to take him safety. Thank you. Uh... Who's that? Hello, Aryan Aaron Aryan Enterprises. Hello, bro. Um, my chat is very slow because I'm watching YouTube on my phone at the same time, so I may not see your messages right when you send them. So don't be disheartened if I don't reply straight away. But yeah, what's up, bro? Thank you for tuning in. My internet's pretty slow as well at the minute. Yeah, that's so weird. Alright, um, for some reason, I think I'll try and reply in the chat. Oh, what's up, bro? I'm from England. Where are you from? I'm quickly going to put the links back in the chat because they seem to have disappeared for some reason. So, quickly, what did we, what did we do last time? So this one is our latest video. Hey, what's up from India, bro? What part are you from? So that one is our newest video, our latest video, and the next one should be our hats and hoodies. There we go. They're back in the chat. I don't know why they disappeared. Maybe it's because uh, the time elapsed or whatever. I don't know. I don't know how YouTube works anymore, so weird. But yeah, what part of India are you from, man? You, we, uh, we actually do get quite a lot of people passing through from India on this channel, which is pretty cool, man. I, I know, like, I don't want to be, like, culturally inappropriate, but I know a lot of the viewers from India, I think they speak Hindi, so it is a little bit of a, hey, that's a big city, welcome, welcome, man. So yeah, am I am I right in thinking that you guys speak Hindi, or am I am I incorrect about that? But yeah, I was just saying, like I know the language barrier can be a little bit difficult. So a lot of times when people come on the channel from like different countries in the East and in Europe and stuff, and they hear me speaking English, they're kind of like, oh, I thought this was something else, you know. But yeah, I do. I do appreciate that. I do appreciate that because although we speak different languages, we definitely share some of the same cultural nuances. For instance, you're probably playing Grand Theft Auto yourself somewhere, you know. So there's, there's that. 
Right, now what do we need to do? We need to get back to the sea and buy the shop. Oh, excellent. Yeah, see, well, I'm, I'm not... I wasn't saying that you, you didn't know English. I'm just saying, is that the language is... So, should you... All right, all right. Forgive me for my ignorance for a second, right? So, I understand there's Hindu people, right? And there's, there's like, um, Bengali people. There's, like, there's a variety of different kind of people that come from that region. So, for you, for me, as someone that's English, just to assume that everyone from India is the same would just be stupid, you know what I mean? So, I'm pretty sure that there's different languages even in India. Well, from the friends I went to school with, they, they all speak different languages anyway, so... I know my Bengali guys speak different to, like, so anyway, <laughs> you tell me what language it is that you speak there. I know you speak English perfectly fine. I understand that English is taught everywhere. Like the, the language you speak when you go home, when you speak to your mum and dad, what language do you guys speak? Yeah, I was right then, it is Hindi. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. So, what other, other than Hindi, what are the other like main languages in India? I understand Delhi is quite a mixed city, so it's that's like a Delhi is like a London of India, isn't it? Is that a glitch? It looks like it sh there should be something there. Oh, alien spot. Well, I'm not from a city actually, I'm from a countryside. I'm from a place that's not far from London, but it's definitely not a city, so I'm from a small town. Have you ever been to England or do you got any friends from England? He better move. Look, there's that blue light again. Purple light. What is that? Yeah, this uh, this remake of Grand Theft Auto is quite glitchy, man. There's some things in it that just shouldn't shouldn't be. Why right, we're gonna pop to the gym and see if we can learn some kung fu. Is it? So how old are you? You like are you uni age or are you school age? What's the deal? We could try to learn some martial arts in this building. How many of these people are smoking weed? A lot of people have a false sense of reality. Okay, so I smoke weed every four days. He's probably gonna tell us we have to train. Yes. Oh. I haven't actually had to use the boxing since uh, the beginning of the game. Oh, I didn't leave the ring. He left the ring. So we got some boxing skills from the beginning of the game. What did you say, bro? Secondary education. What's secondary? Secondary like um, that'd be high school, right? Oh, I don't know actually. Over here, so we got we got like. 
We've got nursery, nursery, primary, junior, then high school, then college, then uni. So I'm assuming your secondary would be like high school. Hi everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I'll come and check out your channel later on. Ooh, I didn't even mean to do that. Oh look, we've got we've got new moves now. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought, man. Appreciate you for tuning in, anyways. St stick around on the channel. Check out our transformative um, stories. Oh, dude died. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> oh well. So if you're just tuning in and you're wondering what this speaking is in the background, it's right conscious and he's speaking about David Foster Wallace, who's basically a writer. It's like a, he's like a, he's almost like a cult classic writer now. Like his his books have gone into that era on the internet. It's like cult classic books, which is very strange, but yeah. Let's see if we can go up away. sure if this makes it any more difficult like if it builds your muscle any faster so I'm just spamming the X button anyway I just just check in the the hoodies and hats link. Some of these look so fire, but there's there's some kind of glitch where it's not showing some of the white. Language. So there's some like white clothes on there that should have a black logo, but instead they've put the white logo on the white clothes. So it just they just look like plain, which doesn't make sense. There should also be oh I didn't make a white hat. So yeah, I don't know if I'm going to edit up the, the store a bit more, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. How we're introduced to her is um, through a passage that's a direct imitation of the intro for Matt McCarthy's century, which is one of the most beautiful openings to a novel ever. And Wallace deliberately imitates that. And eventually that character breaks free from that kind of poor Matt McCarthy dialect and becomes herself. And this is actually a mimic of Wallace because... During this time, if you look at a lot of his notes, he was actually mimicking McCarthy. He thought that, okay, what am I going to do? How am I going to reinvent myself? So we turned to Cormac McCarthy. Hey, Squidward, what's up, bro? Time, especially during that time in American writing, he was the GOAT. You know, Wallace is really puppering and such a being like, holy hell, this guy is great. How can I do this? And so he thinks that that's his... Uh, let's give Paul a try again quickly. But he realizes that that's not authentic. And even better, he goes and meets 
Hey. squid ball, hello food. Let's see if Paul works. Are we on a mission? No, look, it's just glitched out again. Yeah, so the pool, the, the pool's glitched out again. Oh, Dirty Squidward, I, ho I hope you're not um, troll trolling, or maybe it's just like a communication issue here, that I'm not quite understanding what you're saying. Oh. <laughs> Oh, how am I supposed to play this? I can't see what's coming up ahead. I have to like do it really slow. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. Oh, sh we got a timer. Huh? That's not right. How are we supposed to get through? That doesn't even make sense. What are we supposed to do? What you're talking about, that is good word. I guess you like Shrek, huh? Did you know Shrek was going to be voiced by a different person? Did you know that? And it was absolutely recorded all the way up until the end point, and it was just like I think maybe one or two scenes that were left over that they had to fix. Ooh, shall saying. I bet him? Nah. Let's see if it glitches up. Oh, dude, shoot. Press so, so how do we determine the power of the shot? Oh, shame. Alright, quickly now, I need to pick an, another YouTube video. Go ahead, got some Frederick Nietzsche. Alright. Oh, it didn't glitch out this time. Excellent. Let's see what we can do. What are we. Oh, still open table. Was a German philosopher. Yes, we know, we know. Critic. He was one of the key figures in the philosophy of existentialism. Among his famous works are the books Thus Spoke Zarathustra, The Birth of Tragedy. How am I supposed to adjust the power of the shot? Ah, oh, still open table. One of Nietzsche's most famous concepts is what he called the will to power. Having desires or values are the will, and the actions you take as a result of those. This could have been power. way better. Power doesn't mean okay, money so we've got a little adjustment status, on the board. But rather just achieving whatever goal stems from your will. According to Nietzsche, every living being has a will to power. Figuring out your will and how to use it as a way to power is essential to staying true to yourself. Nietzsche's existentialism emphasizes that each individual human being is completely free and thus completely responsible for their own choices and actions. Indeed. As a result, he had a strong disdain for group thinking and encouraged people around them to always think So this this um this YouTube video is totally gonna get a copyright strike, right? but it's better than keeping you guys sat there in silence. Number one, don't follow the herd. Nietzsche 
says. You have your way, I have my way. As for the right way, the correct way, and the only way, it does not exist. According to Nietzsche, you can't stay true to yourself if you don't really know who you are. Sorry guys, um, just putting back the link in the chat, so it's at the bottom. So yeah, new hoodies, new hats are there in the chat. Because uh, Squidward, Squidward had a little bit of a malfunction there. Let's see if we can get a trick shot on that. Ah, oh, no power whatsoever. Go on, touch it, touch it, touch it. Yeah. To be honest, I have seen better mini clip games than this. What in the first place? So, in Nietzsche's philosophy, success isn't defined by money or status, but by individuality. Individuality doesn't just mean doing whatever you want, but. Oh, he's taking it serious now, isn't he? But rather, figuring out what you find important in life. What are your values, your moral beliefs, and what do you think the purpose of life is? It's about identifying and expressing yourself instead of just doing what everyone else is doing. Copying what everyone else is doing or following the herd happens unconsciously. If a group takes or recommends a certain action, it feels sensible to follow this advice. For example, most people would classify success as having a good job and earning a high salary, which motivates more individuals to focus on these goals. However, uh, which stripes? Money doesn't okay. make everybody happy and doesn't fit into everybody's life. Some people would be happiest or make the biggest. Ah, uh, put it on the visibles, but not directly, so it shouldn't count. Pay much, but is satisfying. Uh, that shouldn't count, bro. I didn't hit his ball on purpose. Culture, social circle, society, anything can have you subconsciously convinced that a certain route to take is the best route in all walks of life. Aside from careers, this can concern relationships, marriage, friendships, family, hobbies, school, and more. When the herd collectively does something, come on, come on, honey, get it out. Hey. <laughs> something. You get the urge to do it too. You don't even think about it. And as long as you don't actively hate the path that the others are following. And half an hour later, she passed by and put a paper crown on my head. And I, I, I wanted to come out of it enough that I didn't take off. I lost 50 quid. Damn it. I'm out of here. Just it sucks. Your money. I was just stuck. Hey, hey, we kept the pool stick. Later still, she did not give up. She came by again and she put the cape on my shoulders. I still, still insisted on feeling bad until at some point. Okay. How, how comes I'm allowed to have so many different melee weapons? Doesn't make sense. So before that was a shovel. Now it's a pool stick. I don't know, I don't know why we're allowed to have two melee weapons all of a sudden. Maybe the cane standing in for our sword or something? Alright, now we're gonna lose half of our money, well, more than half of it. Everybody's days are numbered. You know, people be like in movies and stuff. They be like, "Ah, oh, we're gonna die, we're gonna die." Yeah, and I'm just like, yeah, yeah. So we all are. Just, just in the matter of time. Oh, that's all. Oh, okay. I think we gotta get a phone call. And then we can start missions. There we go. Look at that! That's a nice glitch. Their days are no Hello? Carl, it's 
Z, you wasn't around when I signed the deed. Yes, I know. I was on a dangerous recruiting position into enemy territory. Yeah, right, sure, let me say. I should come through and have a look at the business, you know? Oh, of course, of course. I'll have to switch up a bit. This place is tremendous. Don't worry about it. I'll drop in soon. What kind of gun is that? They have treated you with contempt for so long. Oh, there's an eagle. They have stolen what the big power. All right, let's start. Victimized you. They have treated you. I, I, I speak for yourself. Hey, what up, Z? Nothing is up, Carl. Apart from my blood pressure and the imminent collapse of my hopes and dreams. Wow. As usual, the forces of darkness have triumphed over good. Life is nothing but misery, briefly interspersed with agony. Homie, what you own? Whatever it is, you need to reduce the dose. <sighs> Excuse me, but I never take drugs. We all know drugs are for losers and or sex maniacs. Right now, sex is the last thing on my mind. Sad. Thank God for that. <laughs> Berkeley is back. Oh, Berkeley. Yes. Who the fuck is Berkeley? Oh, just a man I once beat in fair competition. A man literally obsessed with revenge. Oh, you put hands on him? No, please. I never initiate violence. Oh, I know. You knocked this bitch. Uh, no. I won the prize in the science fair. <laughs> First prize, that is. And now you want to pop you? <laughs> and they say game bangers is petty and small mind. Hey, what's that bleeping sign? That's him. We shall fight to the end. This pole's looking interesting. So we got, this what was the best PS1 fighting All game? We got Bloody Raw, Tekken, Dead or Alive. He's right now, Tekken is leading at 56%, Bloody Raw 33%, and Dead or Alive 11%. No problem, Surprise, man, not a lot of people know, 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 know about Bloody Raw or Dead or, Dead or Alive, to be honest. They just know the big three, which is Street Fighter, Tekken, and Mortal Kombat. Ah, oh, this mission used to give me so much, so much trouble back in the day. All right, before I start the mission, let me just find the video to listen to in the background. Yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, not a lot of people know about Bloody Raw. Bloody Raw was like, it's one of them like, I don't know man, Bloody Raw had so much potential with the style of fighting. So basically Bloody Raw was like a fighting game, like any other fighting game, but you can turn it into an animal like midway into the fight, which was actually excellent when you think about it. But yeah, not a lot of people know about Bloody Raw. It's a real classic game on PlayStation 1. And of course, few people know about Dead or Alive. The first Dead or Alive, anyway. We've heard a lot about this. Indeed, some Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, recently said that we'll need small modular nuclear reactors just to power all those AI. Yeah, YouTube's kind of boring at a minute. Well, my algorithm is. This mission is always so difficult. Problem is, you gotta turn to the right one at the right time, or else it just skeet past you like that one.
Damn it! Yes! I'm not doing too bad at the minute. Still got a secondary tower, I believe. Damn, I ain't hit nothing! Damn it! Well, if they hit us through. Do something zero, damn it! Where are all these planes coming from? Look, there's so many red markers, but where are they? Oh, it's, it's about to be game over. <laughs> yeah, so we done it. Now leave. <laughs> Cheeky oh, shit. So many. Too little three. No, that's not it. What is it? We will fight him on the beaches. Well, rooftops. Oh, why have we got a rocket launcher? Ah. Uh, Hey man, don't play no music. Alright, this one's the magnet car one. Hey, Z, where you at? Go away, Carl. I'm, I'm very, very busy back here. Top, top secret stuff, not for your eyes. Too sensitive. Come on, homie, why? Are you? I said go away, <laughs> Carl. I don't need any friends today. Thank you. Get the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra with Vodafone's yeah, What the fuck? Yes. This is my entire reading strategy. Carl, he came back and humiliated me. I shall probably turn to prostitution now. <laughs> I will be found dead. I am a 28-year-old man whose landlord just helped him down from a hook from which I had been hanging from my underwear, contemplating my inadequacy for nearly two hours. Look, you gotta get even, homie. What kind of weapons you got? Uh, I've got a prototype of a miniature plane. <laughs> With that plane, we gonna go humiliate Bert. <laughs> okay, cool. Man, this is ridiculous. That went right up my crack. <laughs> Berkeley has his sycophantic lackeys do all his deliveries. Well, we shall hit him where it hurts the most. Bring his mail order model business to me and me. Launch the Red Baron. Oh, it's so hard to drive. Oh, they have guns too as well. Oh, no, no.
what do we go for? We go for the furthest one out. I'm pretty sure they kind of circle back to the to this area. If we go too far out, we waste the fuel and fail the mission, or too high up. Man, flying these things are annoying. Oh, I'm good in tree. Oh, okay. Guess not. Oh, come on! Annoying. Why is it dipping like this, man? I think we're taking damage at some point. It should just be gliding. Come on, jump out, bro. Police did not care. So right, I'm, I'm clicking the right rudder, but it's not turning, so I feel like we've taken damage at some point. Yeah, it's not turning right. It's just getting higher.
ozone smell smells like victory. What's happening, Zero? I'm off to engage with destiny, good or bad. What the hell are you talking about now? The hour of judgment is upon me, and I must ask myself if I am a sheep or a goat. Carl, will you be my second? Here are some letters. I've left everything to you in case I don't make it. Please. Already own it! What's wrong with you, man? We are crossing the Rubicon. I am to engage in battle with Berkeley. At stake, honor, and our very lives. It's funny. I've never noticed before how beautiful this time of year can be. I may never again see Rome in the springtime. <laughs> a butterfly. Come on with all the talking, man. Is you gonna battle Berkeley or what? It's a fight to the death! Come hither! Behold, no man's land. Man, y'all take this shit seriously. Berkeley's headquarters is across no man's land. I'll drive the bandit, you fly the goblin, and help any way you can. If I get the bandit into Berkeley's base, he must leave San Fierro for good. Let battle commence! Carl, don't be an idiot. Use the goblin to move that barrel. Carl, I'm blocked. There's another cursed barrel in the way. Berkeley's using tanks! Carl, grab a bomb and get rid of any tanks that threaten our progress. Move it! Carl, Berkeley's blocked me again. Curse you, Berkeley! Carl, move that barrel!
Carl, move that obstruction. Carl, I'm blocked. There's another cursed barrel in the way. Move it! Carl, Berkeley's blocked me again. Curse you, Berkeley! Carl, move that barrel! Carl, move that obstruction. Carl, I'm blocked. There's another cursed barrel in the way. Move it. Carl, Berkeley's blocked me again. Curse you, Berkeley! Carl, move that barrel! Carl, move that obstruction! Carl, I'm blocked! There's another cursed barrel in the way. Move it! Carl, Berkeley's blocked me again. Curse you, Berkeley! Carl, move that barrel! Berkeley, this is not the end of this. Do you hear me? Because it bloody glitched. It glitched, so I had to quit. It was at the end as well. Annoying. Behold, no man's land. Man, y'all take.
Carl, don't be an idiot. Use the goblin to move that barrel. Berkeley's using tanks! Carl, grab a bomb and get rid of any tanks that threaten our progress. Carl, I'm blocked. There's another cursed barrel in the way. Move it. Carl, Berkeley's blocked me. Curse you, Berkeley! Carl, move that barrel! Carl, move that obstruction! Carl, I'm blocked! There's another cursed barrel in the way. Move it! Carl, Berkeley's blocked me again. Curse you, Berkeley! Carl, move that barrel! Berkeley, you, sir, are a loser. Leave the field of battle in shame, pack up your crummy mail-order business, and get out of my town! Carl, you were all a duelist like me could want in a second. Sir, I salute you.
Jizzy, what's going on? Well, my business associates, they need a little assistance. And I thought of you, friend. Meet T-Bone at the gas station next to the docks in the Easter Basin. 
He's waiting for you in a four-door sedan. Excuse me, partner. I got a call coming in. A river dirty. Yeah, whatever you say. Bye. It's my constitution. You dickhead. Man, where the hell are everybody anyway? Ah, uh, hey! You a pinchy uh, hoot or what? Uh, what the hell? You think you can mess uh, with me? Uh, uh, I, I will blow your head off and rape and kill your family, you snake! Uh, uh, you think you can fucking bullshit me and fuck me over? Uh, I know your fucking uh, game, that's uh, I don't know what you're talking about, man. Ah, my throat! Who you working for? Nobody! Turn around and look at me. <coughs> man, I'm just trying to make some money. Keep my mouth shut, I swear, man. <laughs> I almost had you, man. I almost fucking had you. <coughs> Watcha? You gotta be careful in this business, man. You know that. Are you boys done playing around? Yeah, we're straight, Bato. Oh, good. That's great. Now, we gotta go meet this shipment. We're late as it is. Let's go. You heard what Hefty said. Get out and grab a bike. The shipment has to get to the factory. You make sure it does, we make it worth your while. We're watching you, kid. See more, Nessie. We're watching. Take that paper. I need that beer.
Okay, we made it. But the cops gonna be all over the spot real soon. Get the van out of sight. I'm gonna get out of here. guys remember i was saying earlier on about the rapper dude that done the copyright thing on metal gear solid so the dude that made a video about it he was just replying to me now saying that he's won his copyright claim as well so it turns out it's either youtube returned them all or the dude's just done the right thing and just uh like cancelled his claim which is good but hey i was giving you an update on that because that's why I, I paused the game i was kind of distracted trying to figure this out but yeah, it's all resolved. Think I think all is well until he decides to do it again. <laughs> but yeah, that's cool. All right, give me a minute and I'll be back. Hey, CJ. What's up? Hey, what's up, Jethro? Some cops are looking for you in the office, man. Tampin. All right, man, I got mm -hmm. it. Nice to see y'all kicking back. Oh. I wonder how your brother's sleeping, curled up next to his shower daddy while you lived comfortably on the outside. 
What y'all want this time? Well, what we want is to get on with our jobs in peace without some damn bleeding heart liberal poking his nose into affairs he won't even understand. The press on the young? What the hell would you know about it, boy? Whoa, easy there, Eddie. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Some young journalist out there is trying to get a name for himself. He doesn't know how the streets work. That he's supposed to report what he's supposed to report. Yeah, anyway, we need you to shut him up for us. And that stoolie, shut him up too. Yeah, that's some reporter who's digging up dirt on Pulaski. We don't know who's talking, but we know the reporter's meeting him today. Take care of him. Oh, this is a nice place, Carl. A girl's got to earn a living somehow. Back in a minute, guys. Be back in a minute.
So, if you care to be really good at something, have a go. If you're an aspiring writer, if writing is part of your job, then decide to get really good at it. Oh, they're not going to make me put away my rifle. When you read, noticing things is one of the main differentiators between professionals and amateurs. All sorts of things in your life will change if you become a better writer. If you're single, your dating life will improve. Seriously. You'll write better love letters. And you'll find that the people to whom you're writing them um, are probably um, of a different quality as well. If you're a newscaster, your popularity will grow. Say that you're I don't know if this guy's capital or not. He's talking about grammar, by the way. By the way, if you're a lawyer or a judge, you'll do better work. And if you're a lawyer or a judge and you need Taking legal education in, in, of any kind, uh, go to www.lawpros.org. That's our website. Lawpros with an E on the end. We have what we think. This is what happens. That was close.
Program. You don't look like you need this no more.
What wonderful drop. You're doing business with you. What about a five finger discount?
two. Caesar, the Yay leaving San Fierro, right? Right, but they're using bikes, CJ, and they go cross country. Not right now. I gotta check into some shit. Let's get to my destination.
for follow moves you. Sorry, man. Private function. Take your time and let me love you good. Give me some room. Give me some room, bitch! It's that time of the week again. Your provider is about to make that special call. If I think for a moment that one of you hoes is hustling me, You better make a bigger cut this week, Jizz. We running low, honey. Shut up, bitch. I'm handling business. Don't you even raise your voice in no, half shut hole. up, bitch. Oh. You funky ass. What a dick. Hey, Jizzy, I need to holler at you. Well, talk then, friend. I mean, that's all we ever do. Kind word here. Why I saying that? Shit. I'm a walking book of proverbs. No, nah, you fucked up. C come on, man. Hey, I get it wrong, you know? I'm imperfect, you know, like, uh, hey, not a, not a kind man, not a wise man, you know, not, not a smart man, but, but dear Lord, I tried. No, you fucked up when you trusted me, player. Come on, baby. I, 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 Ass selling. Yay, pushing. Piece of shit trash. Oh, Lord. Oh, wait, no, huh? Somebody tap this nigga, man.
that could have bruised me. Hey, Caesar. Hey, dude, what's up? I need you to meet me at Pier 69. We gonna take down the loco syndicate. Okay, Holmes, you need some backup? Nah, man, I got it covered. Alright folks, I think I've just about had enough of playing this game. It's about late in the afternoon, the evening or the morning, depending on where you are in the world. I uh, appreciate you for tuning in. Don't forget to check out our latest video. The Y files are really real. And also check out our new hoodies and hats. Alright, appreciate you. Oh, by the way, before I go, let's do the usual. Check out um, the dudes that were saying crazy stuff in the, in the chat. Hmm? Let's see if I can find them. In the chat. Hmm? 
go to dude's channel oh surprise dirty squidward has no videos should be subscribed he joined january 2024 i don't know i feel like dirty squidward was a was was an attempted troll <laughs> What about Aryan? Aryan's pretty cool. We'll give Ar Aryan Enterprises a nice sub back. He hasn't got any videos, so leave a comment though. It's unfortunate. That's going to be it for today. Thank you guys for tuning in. Catch you later on the next stream. Don't forget to check out our latest videos. And also, go hit up...